In 2018, someone died of an opioid overdose every 11 minutes in the United States. The response to the opioid overdose crisis needs to be a holistic one that includes access to evidence-based treatment. Community health centers are a really important part of helping to fill the gap in access to addiction treatment. In this video, you're going to hear the voices of staff who work in community health centers that offer opioid addiction treatment services and from the patients that they serve. There was a time when even the medical community believed that addiction was a moral failing or a lack of willpower. Now, through science, we understand that addiction is a chronic health condition that impacts the brain. As someone who works in primary care settings and treats opioid addiction, I understand that there is no one story to addiction. But we do also know that there are certain factors that increase the risk that someone develops addiction. Specifically, we know that genetics play an important role in the likelihood that someone develops addiction. We also know that people who are exposed to trauma and especially negative experiences in early childhood have a significantly increased risk of developing addiction. When someone develops opioid addiction, there's a rewiring that happens in the brain. It's this rewiring that causes people to feel really, really sick when they don't have opioids in their system and makes them feel normal when they do have opioids in their system. It's also this rewiring that compels people to continue to use opioids even in the face of negative consequences. Uh, my story is like, I couldn't handle like all the pain and all of the emotions that life has to throw at you. Uh, my boyfriend killed himself when I was 16. And so like I started drinking and smoking weed to like, uh, you know, fill <coughs> to stuff down that pain and uh, fill that void of like loneliness and never feeling like I fit in. Uh, and that quickly progressed into like methamphetamines and, uh, and then uh, my sister died in April of 2016. And um, like the meth was no longer working. And um, uh, I turned to heroin and uh, quickly lost everything that I had worked for. In six months, I ended up with a felony, pregnant, and I was hooked to heroin. So I think, yeah, I was... I'm scared. I'm 27. By the time I reached 15 years old, um, I had experimented with just about every drug. After a while, um, <laughs> things uh, started to deteriorate. It got to a point to where I couldn't keep a job. Uh, I became alienated from my family, all of my friends, because of the stigma of of all the stigmas that come along with a person using drugs, people thinking that I was just a weak-willed or weak-minded person and that I made the choice to do is just surely out of the fact that I was, uh, wasn't was strong, strong enough for, uh, to, to just say no to the drugs and put it down, but it affected my life in a sense to where it, it caused me to lose uh, every job that I got, uh, apartments that I got, cars that I got, I just couldn't uh, maintain a, a healthy lifestyle. Like many other chronic health conditions, we have effective treatments for opioid addiction and people do get better. In primary care settings, we can prescribe medications like buprenorphine or trade name Suboxone or injectable naltrexone, trade name Vivitrol for the treatment of opioid use disorder. There is one other medicine, methadone, which is highly effective for the treatment of opioid use disorder, but it can only be dispensed in specialty clinics. We know that all three of these medicines have been shown to reduce the risk that somebody continues to use illicit opioids, and it increases their retention in treatment. Buprenorphine and methadone have also been shown to reduce the risk of death. My life has changed for the better since I get on the Vivitrol which is a medically assisted treatment, which is ingestion that you take once a month. I was able to recover fully. My life has changed because I recovered. 
everything that I've lost. I respect material possessions and my most importantly, my sanity. I really felt like there was no way out. I would get so ill. And if I wasn't ill, I was so mentally dead. I, I, I hated that feeling of being so depressed, like having no interest in anything, all the things that made me happy. And, you know, I was already kind of battling with depression and you can make things worse. And I didn't know. So I think Suboxone was just like, I don't know, it was just amazing because I'm just like, my cravings are gone completely. Um, and I don't know, I feel normal. <laughs> so it's really weird. I just feel normal. And to be normal is just like okay right now. It just feels really good. They was just like, what can we do to, to help you pick the pieces up and, and get everything back together? And they started me out on a small dose and uh, titrated me back up to where I, where, the, where, the, where I needed to be. And it was just n no judgment or anything whatsoever. And this is the longest I've been clean um, f the four years that I've been in this program. I, I couldn't put this amount of time together or have this type of quality of life uh, without being in this program. It just didn't happen for me. Nearly 80% of Americans with opioid addiction don't receive treatment. And there are lots of reasons that this happens. One reason is because we know there's not nearly enough access. Recent estimates suggest that 40% of US counties don't have a single buprenorphine prescriber. Additionally, we know that people with addiction have often been treated really poorly by healthcare systems in the past. And this may impact how likely they are to try to engage in services given their past negative experiences. Community health centers can be a really important part of both filling that gap and access to treatment and also ensuring that people with addiction receive empathetic and respectful care. And, you know, I would often hear patients say, uh, my parents won't even talk to me anymore. They said that I'm a low life. I've thrown my life away. So there's already so much guilt and shame on these individuals that where do they really have to go? They, there is no positive reinforcement. There is no positive conversations they're really having. She takes me to the emergency room. I'm in so much pain and I just felt like I was, I don't even know, it was just the worst thing ever. The ride was weird. And even when I got there, like, I felt like, an insect. It was so, and I've never felt that way. And I'm Mexican, but man, it was gross. Like they were just kind of looking at me like, um, you know, this is a hospital. This is where we treat people. Uh, if you want to go do dope on your own time, you know, figure it out. And it was just, they didn't have a bed for me. And he just kind of told me like, drink Gatorade, something about electrolytes. And then I don't even know. He didn't really tell me anything for the pain because, you know, I'm a junkie, so I'll probably do something with that. And it was just really awful. And I felt so disgusting. Something that we have noticed is that, unfortunately, a lot of patients have had really bad experiences with the healthcare system. Um, they, they've been pretty much mistreated in the past. They, and they have either a fear or they really don't trust us at all. And that's okay. You know, we acknowledge that. We tell the patients that we're there to help them and it will take some time for them to trust us. Our patients tend to have a lot of challenges. Usually by the time they get to us and are enrolling in a medication assisted treatment program, a lot of times they have, for lack of a better term, burned a lot of bridges. Um, their addiction has taken hold and oftentimes they have lost family and friends and multiple jobs. My role in it is that I am usually the first contact with the participant. I start that process of building a relationship, which I think is extremely important because a trust factor has to be built. Most times participants come to a medical clinic for medical services and they tend to have a hard time um, talking about their drug use.
There are so many people in the United States who need access to evidence-based addiction treatment services. To be able to adequately address the gap in treatment that we have in the United States, we need community health centers to step up and start delivering these services in a respectful and supportive way. Be empathetic towards the patients, to understand that they have good intentions, but substance use disorder kind of challenges them to, to follow through. It's not that they don't want to get sober, it's just a struggle. Just be more empathetic towards the patients that come in and don't give up hope on them. So I really enjoy what I do um, because I get to listen to people's stories. And I think that's something that I didn't really expect when I started this job. Um, a lot of our patients have stories to tell and nobody's really listened to them. So it's, you know, um, it, how did they get where they are now, learning about their families. At the end of the day, our patients are people just like everybody else. And it's getting to know them on an individual basis and having them come in and smile. As we work, um, we do provide a service for the community. We treat the people who are in the community. It's important for us to realize and to understand that where we are, there is an underserved population. So these people um, who are coming into the clinic are us. They're us. We are in the community. And so um, the people that we are treating are us. And so like today I have self-respect, self-love, self-worth. Opiates took my sister from me um, and, you know, I was uh, willing to let it take me out and, uh, you know, now I'm not willing to let it take me out anymore because um, I want my life to mean something and I don't want to just be another statistic. Before I, I started to take in, uh, uh, Suboxone, um, in the, in, the, in the neighborhood that I was in, most of the people that uh, just didn't uh, believe it would work end up passing away. And I just can't help but to think with with the the uh, opioid crisis that we're facing right now and the level of, of drug overdoses that's going on. I, I can leave my house and I and. I can ride past an overdose at least once a day, someone overdosing. That would have probably, I probably would have been one of those people had I not given this program a chance. That's how important it is to me and how much it has changed and saved my life. Too many people have already died of opioid overdose. And it's important to remember that overdose deaths are completely preventable. Opioid addiction treatment is effective and saves lives. Community health centers have an important role to play to treat our entire community, which includes people who use drugs. It's on all of us as health center staff to make sure that we welcome and engage people who use drugs in a respectful and supportive way.